So we know that light is quantized. Light is made up of individual particles, and we have to have an integer number of those, one, two, three, or some integer number of photons make up a light beam. Turns out not just the energy of light is quantized, meaning we can have the energy of one photon or two photons or three photons, but we can't have the energy of one and a half photons. We can't uh, have a non-integer number of photons, so we have certain allowed energies of light that are allowed. So we say the energy of a light beam is quantized. Turns out not just light, but energies of other things are quantized as well. And that's also something we at least have a little bit of experience with from uh, general chemistry or earlier chemistry classes. So when we write an energy level diagram, so let's say in particular for something like the hydrogen atom, the electrons in a hydrogen atom can occupy uh, certain states, and those states have certain energies. We know we can call those things like S and P and D orbitals, but for now, if I just say the energy of that electron can have this value E1, or this value E2, or this value E3, or various other values, essentially what I've done is say the energy levels of that hydrogen atom are quantized. I can have this value, or I can have this value, or this value. I can't have any values in between the values that I've drawn. There's no way to make the hydrogen atom have this amount of energy. It can only have these discrete, individual, quantized amounts of energy that I've drawn on this diagram. So that's something that we know about hydrogen atoms. And in fact, uh, every molecule, every atom, every chemical system has quantized energy levels. And as usual, we didn't suspect this weird quantum behavior was true, even if it seems fairly commonplace now. It wasn't always so. And the evidence that we have that first told us that energy levels were quantized was understanding how uh, light is either emitted uh, or absorbed by atoms and molecules. So uh, something called an atomic emission spectrum. If I bring up a picture here, of the atomic emission spectrum for hydrogen. So let's go ahead and bring up a picture. This diagram for hydrogen tells us the frequencies of light as a function of the frequency or the frequency of light given off by hydrogen. Um, and we see that only certain frequencies of light are emitted. So this uh, reddish color of light can be emitted by hydrogen atom. If I excite it up to some higher energy level, it can drop down to a lower energy and emit a photon of, of this reddish color, or this bluish color, or these uh, violet colors, but only these colors. I, I never see hydrogen emit uh, the orange or yellow or green um, frequencies of light that would be here. So only certain discrete or quantized uh, photons are emitted by hydrogen, and that's because when a hydrogen is in this state, it can only fall, let's say, to this state or to this state. It can't fall anywhere in between because there's no level there to accept it. So for example, this reddish photon is emitted when hydrogen falls from its third state down to its second state. There's other, each one of these different photons corresponds to a different individual transition between discrete quantized states of the hydrogen atom. And that's true not just for hydrogen. If I pull up another picture of what that looks like for helium, this is the emission spectrum for a helium atom, and notice that the colors of light given off by a helium atom are, are A, not the same as they are for hydrogen, because the energy levels are different for hydrogen than they are for helium. And also, they're still discrete and quantized. Only this color of light, or this color of light, or this color of light, and so on, can be given off by helium, not anything in this range where we don't see emission. So it's not just the energy of light that's quantized, but also the energy levels of matter, meaning atoms, meaning uh, molecules that are made of atoms. Um, those energy levels themselves are quantized as well. And also, interestingly, it turns out it's not only energies that are quantized, but other properties of matter can be quantized as well, and that's the next thing we're going to talk about.